What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We are obviously not in the garage today, for now, technically. Um, wanted to go through and break some stuff down for you guys. I actually had some deliveries made for our upcoming trip, and I'm not going to go over those with you, but I wanted you to know that they were there, because our next trip is going to be awesome. Super excited about that, but wanted to go through, um, that was one of the things I wanted to say. We got another thing sent to us from my sister, and apparently I'm supposed to be reviewing it. However, we're just going to show it to you right now, and then we're going to review it in a later video, because today is not going to be a coffee video. It is just a uh, breakdown of what I am doing right now. So, anyways, obviously we got this new one, and it's definitely an interesting packaging for sure. Um, it act, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but I'm going to read it out. Obviously, you can read that part. I'm not going to sit there and say that because I would, when this video does get monetized, I don't want it to get demonetized for language. So, anyways, it says Make America Grind Again, and it's actually a central brew. It says Beat the Streets So Hard, and there's other words here. I'm just going to omit them, but it says Beat the Streets So Hard, they send you a bill for the potholes. And then Official Coffee of the American Dream is what it says. But the actual flavoring on it, I'm interested to try it because it actually is a mix of chocolate, orange, and peppermint. So that sounds pretty good. Um, I'm probably going to end up going through and doing a cold brew with this so this way the actual flavor profiles can come through rather than just the punch of coffee. So I'm going to probably use the Dorothy for this one for the first try. And I'm also going to use the sweetened condensed milk. Um, just so this way we can fully try everything the way that it's intended to. So we're going to do that in a later video. I wanted to show you guys this. It's actually coming from Kansas. Hutchinson? I don't know. One of those towns. She wrote me a note and it's, it's over there. But anyways, it's coming from Kansas. That's where she's at. So, another thing is I did take the steering wheel off. Yes. Why did I take the steering wheel off? Because obviously we talked about it. We're going to go through and put the buttons right here. Um, putting the buttons right here is going to allow me at that point to have full control over the wheel because that was the whole point of that. Um, it is going to be very complicated because the wiring points on this are almost non-existent. So my thought to this point is to get a different clock spring to for this to plug into. And the reason I am saying that is because the clock spring that I have right now, it, this connector that's on here that you guys can't probably see right now but there's there's two empty slots obviously we need four because we need the line coming into the button the line going out to the uh from the button on both sides so that's four obviously um the wiring that's on here i should be able to make connectors to where it can support two of them but my thought is that i'm almost positive that they make a heated steering wheel version of this that Obviously the wiring would be pre-done for that and I can go through and just hijack that and the clock springs I was looking at it. They're like 50 bucks for a brand new one um, I'm not sure if the heated element is going to affect that cost But even then that would probably be bet that would probably be better than me going through and Modifying my existing clock spring which could potentially damage it in which case I'd have to replace it anyway so I'm thinking I should go through and do some research to find a proper clock spring to suit our needs um, for that aspect so I'm gonna do that here probably this week um, Tuesday I am gonna be driving all the way across town again to drop off the calipers hopefully this for the last time um, especially since the shop has you know obviously been taking care of this which I'm, I'm glad to them their quality is awesome it's just I don't we just need to get this finished, obviously, because I want to get the car back on the ground. I want to start driving it. Um, at this point, the only thing that I am, is holding us up is the brakes, which obviously that's kind of stopping the project, if you will. Yes, that's a play on words, but um, we're just waiting on that. So here I'm going to go through and start taking the steering wheel apart um, as well, because I need to obviously fashion the point for the button to actually, you know, attach to. So. I'm going to go through and probably do that here in a moment, and we'll be right back. Okay, so obviously we got the steering wheel here. And yes, I have you guys very close because I want you to be able to see what exactly we're doing. So, 
From what I understand, all of this is held in, obviously, by the little snap clips. So we're going to go through and take our plastic removal tool here and basically separate this up. And should release the clips. And that's a big should, obviously, because at this point, we're having to go off of what the internet says. And we obviously don't want to break any of this stuff, but looking at it, there is a screw that's on the inside of this here. It does make it look like it's also attached to this trim here, unlike other cars where they don't have that, that shiny trim. Gotta go through and just separate it all out, so. I'm gonna, eh, let's find a better spot to do that from. There we go. Let's see if I can get this to separate nicely. Well, that's coming out. There we go. That's nice. Cool. Let's go through and take off these little connectors here on both sides. So this way we can just separate this whole thing. We don't want that side, we want this side. Well, that's simple. Very nice. It's interesting, the uh, connections that are in here, the actual part itself, seems like it was being held into place by the, the rubber on the steering wheel, or what appears to be, or not rubber, sorry, leather, what it appears to be leather on the steering wheel, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so now we got that out, obviously, I'm going to tell you up. Well, hello, you're back. So, we have that whole piece out, here's obviously the steering controls and they're a whole lot of nothing to them. They're just individual pieces that are held in, also by plastic snaps, apparently. Mm, cool, okay. So we got that part out. Now for the fun part, I have to figure out, and obviously there's the lights again. I have to figure out how we're gonna go through and put mounting plates in here. I see that screw that's there. That's probably holding uh, the, the back portion of it there. I might put like a an adapter, or not adapter, but like a plate in between the screw to where it's all held into place as well because my plan is to put like a metal bracket there, most likely aluminum, um, like a, just a panel itself, just a flat plate almost for the the button itself to go through. So that's my intentions at this point. So we got that part done. Um, obviously I'm going to stop here today because I got to figure out kind of back to the drawing boards at this point because I have to figure out how I'm gonna do this and I'm not gonna put you guys through that. I'm gonna figure it out and then show you how I'm doing it. So this way you guys can obviously learn and see and if I break something, you know, I'll, I'll show you that I broke it, but I did not break this. I'm so happy because I know that this part right here would not be cheap. Um, that is kind of cool that it is separate pieces because this chrome is detachable. I can sit there and make it any color I want. Well, that's kind of interesting. I might wrap that, I don't know yet. Cause I don't want to paint it. That'd be a lot of work. Cool. Anyways, on to our next project. Okay, so we're obviously inside of the car now. Um, I'm gonna flip the camera around and get some light on the situation so you guys can actually see what I'm talking about inside of the car. So give me one sec. Okay, so obviously what we're looking at right now, this is the clock spring. Obviously, this is the part that turns. Notice the center part doesn't because when you actually turn the wheel, this is actually the whole thing. And right now, this is just a, a bolt that's attached to it. I didn't want to get it lost or damaged or anything. But that right there is the uh, the part that the steering wheel itself goes around. There's the splines on it. You can see it. There are little lines that hold everything in place. But this is the steer where the steering wheel goes, obviously. And the splines, as you turn the wheel, the splines is actually what turns the steering, uh, well, losing my terminology, but basically the, the, there's a line that goes down, it's more of a tube, that as you turn it, it turns the, the wheels themselves. So that's how that works. And this here is just there. This is how all the wires rotate, though. If you guys 
haven't seen what a clock spring actually is like on a regular clock all it is is just a piece of metal that coils up on itself so as you tighten things down the the coil gets tighter and as it loosens up the coils release so it's the same concept as for the wiring here um with this portion here i didn't want to take it apart because obviously we didn't want to mess with anything there and i don't have any ribbon cable or anything of that effect to add into this to where i can go through and put it like another connector on the inside of this which is why i want to see if i can find something that's already pre-made and get that headache out of the way so um right now i'm going to go through and i have to take off the uh, shroud for this portion here to where we can get access to the where the wires and everything are so i'm going to go through and get that done we'll be right back Okay, so obviously this is the part that comes up here. This whole thing should come out here, but I'm just going to leave it there for now because I don't need to really mess with it. All it is is just these little plastic clips that click down inside of it to hold it in place. And then these other ones, I think there's bolts down here for this the remaining portion of it because of this adjustable portion. I mean, this whole thing can go up and down. That's the whole point of this lever right here is to lock the steering wheel in place where you want it for the height. Um, but now that we have that done, you can see what the inside of the column looks like. There's all the... Oh, that's the steering... See? That's that tube. It's called the steering column. Um, so, come on, focus. Focus, focus, focus. Okay. Well, you can see the wires and all that stuff that are coming up into the back of the harness here. Or back of the... the uh... oh, okay, so the red and yellow piece is actually for the airbag. And then this is the harness adapter for the steering wheel controls and everything else. That's where all this stuff plugs into. And then here's obviously the other end for the airbag, which the airbag is sitting outside of the car right now. We don't want that accidentally going off or anything with that effect. So now you can see that. I'm going to go through and take a look at this to see where we can go through and possibly add in our other stuff or to see, um, I'm going to do some research obviously to see if I can find the replacement for this whole assembly because this whole piece is going to come out and hopefully have the attachments that we're going to need. So we'll be back again. Okay, so this is what it looks like all taken apart. The lower section, like we were talking about, is actually in two separate pieces. Got both of those out. And they did have four different um, bolts to go with it. So we went through and labeled the location of all of them. Um, just for whatever reason, they decided to use four different size of bolts. You can kind of see... The bolt heads are all the same size, but the actual um, the bolts themselves are different threads and thickness and and everything to that effect. So got that all taken apart. Did do some more research. I'm gonna have to custom this steering thing in general. It's a lot of extra work, but it shouldn't be too complicated. I'm just gonna have to go through and solder in extra wires and take the car, take apart the clock spring and add more cables to it and a bunch of other stuff. So yeah, it's gonna be a fun one. You guys get to go along with me, but I'm gonna go through and take this clock spring out. There's only four screws and they're Phillips screws, which I mean, that, that'll make it a little easier. So that's kind of cool. I'm gonna go through and take those out. The whole clock spring assembly is gonna come off of the steering column itself and that, man this lighting is horrible sorry guys um gonna go through and take that off and then just or yeah disconnect the uh two harnesses that are attached to the back of it for the airbag as well as the controls and then uh then at that point we get to figure out how to to not break this and also add in extra cables and all that stuff too so we're gonna get that done in a later video um but we have some errands we're going to go through and run, and we'll be back later today, so we're going to pick up when we get home. Guys, I just had a bright idea. Yes, you know, that was punny because of the light in the background. So, um, the, the the bright idea is I'm going to go through and take off the... Uh, I'm going to take off the clock spring of the steering wheel, con or like the actual hub itself. And then from there, my plan is to open it up with you guys so you can see it real quick. Then we're going to end the video. So I'm going to go through and show you what we got to do. So looking at this, there's going to end up being these four screws. And then on the back there is these two harness connections, as well as the one down here, which you can kind of see. This one here, if I'm not mistaken, is just for the positioning to figure out where exactly this is at, because obviously the computer needs to know 
how far we are to the left or the right or whatever. And uh, then this way it tells the computer, you know, what to do accordingly. So we got to go through and undo those and we will be right back. Okay, so the clock spring itself is just a housing. You can kind of tell by looking here that it's two separate pieces. This part turns and this whole piece back here is in a, a different assembly in itself. So what we got to go through and do is basically disassemble the housing back here, which this is the sensor for the position sensor of the where the clock spring is actually at. And this shaft that goes up through here, the actual hole here, is basically just clipped. The sensor is attached to this back housing, so it should just all separate, which is probably gonna take a little bit of doing, so I'm gonna put you guys onto a bit of a time lapse. I'm gonna go through and figure this out as we go, and hopefully we can get this figured out without me having to get a new one, because I really don't wanna to have to get a new one. But we'll see. Okay, so at this part I've got the sensor portion taken off. That was just basically clipped around here. Cool thing about this is if you guys can kind of see that, the outer ring that's inside of here is shaped a certain way to fit around the internal ring here. So that's kind of cool. Even though this part spins, it only mounts on one way and then is held in with this little peg into that slot. So this way that senses the portion here. So because as this turns, the center shaft turns too, so that's kind of cool. Um, now at this point, I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, I, From what I can tell, this is just a cover that should separate from that side there, which I'm still working on it because this whole sec center section here moves, obviously, as you can see here. So I'm trying to basically push that part out as well as take this top part off because Underneath that cover is where all the ribbon cable is at that we need to get to. Um, because once we get into that, then that will allow us to go through and add more wires to the case itself, which is what we need. So I'm going to pause the video again and figure that out, and I will be right back. Okay, so we got it apart. You can kind of see here we don't want to take it all the way apart just because we don't want to damage any components, obviously. But... That's what the inside of the clock spring looks like. Obviously, these are the ribbon cables. They twist up, and as they get tight, they obviously make it make it to where it stops there. And then this is actually what holds everything in place. There's these four little tabs that basically grab onto the inside of this to hold everything down in place. Even though the center section turns with that bottom section, it's all one unit, so that's kind of cool that it, it separates this way. So now, now that we got all that taken apart, we're gonna have to figure out how we're going to add another cable into this without causing any extra problems, obviously. That's gonna be the fun part. I'm gonna have to figure that out off camera because I'm not gonna struggle too much with this. Um, actually, I'm gonna struggle a lot, but you guys don't need to follow along with me on that one. Obviously, it's kind of interesting because if you look at it, there's only four ribbons on the inside of this, you can kind of, those four lines that are there, those are actual different wiring. So those wires I'm guessing are split um, in the middle with like different plastic fibers, because when it comes down to the pins, there's only 10 pins here, and then there's only four pins here. And obviously if we flip this over here, there is two and two on these connectors, and then there's the 10 here, which go into the actual steering wheel for the controls there. So. That's how that part works, and like I was saying, at this point, we just gotta figure out how the heck we're gonna go through and get this um, added on and all that. So, that's not gonna be a fun part for me. Um, yeah, it's very intricate on how this is actually working. Even, even though it's very simple, and then there's not a whole lot to it, it's interesting, I mean, Whoever came up with this idea, obviously had quite a bit of time to think about it, because that's pretty much it. Not not a whole lot to it. Very impressive. Okay, so obviously at this point we've got the clock spring itself taken apart. I'm going to have to go through and figure that portion out. Don't know how I'm exactly going to do that. I do see a little clear window here. I think that's so you can mark 
mark the actual assembly part together because there is a yellow uh, circle that's in here and it lines up with that that guide window there so that's probably just a guide marker but don't know how we're gonna do that oh okay hang on we have someone who wants to say hi hi gingerbread yes hi she's been bugging me since we got home yes she hasn't been in a video in a while neither is panda or molly Oh, here comes Mamas too. Hi, Mamas. I can't pick both of you up though. So, anyway, can we can we finish the video? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna put you down. Okay. Okay. So we're ending the video here. Um, at this point, obviously, you guys have seen the clock spring taken apart. Future pre the future plans are obviously to go through and figure out how the heck I'm going to wire in more wires because that doesn't look like there's a whole lot of extra room in there. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a it's going to be a challenge for sure. We'll get it done just because we have to. Obviously, um, <laughs> there's a lot of work that goes into this, guys. I hope you are enjoying this channel. I am hoping that you're enjoying the content. Um, this is probably going to be you know, multi-part series for this part just by itself. And uh, the next video is probably going to be a coffee video because obviously we have to get certain things done. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying that. That's going to be a good one. So thank you, Shell, for sending that over. Um, yeah, anyways, we're going to end the video here, like I said. If you guys like this kind of content, please hit the like button. Please, all of you, hit the like button if you watch this video. Because um, in this way, obviously, it gets shared out to YouTube, because in this way, everybody can see what we're actually doing on this channel. This is quite a bit. We're doing a lot of R&D for you guys. If you guys have a Camaro that happens to have a V6 in it, this is the automatic version, but I'm sure a lot of this will actually go over into the Mando version as well. Like the content. Share it to everybody, because, again, we are going to be giving away our paycheck that we get from YouTube once we get to the criteria. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, again, I'm not really needing this channel as an income. This is actually going to be just for this kind of content, expanding, getting to know you guys better, giving you guys the money because I don't really need it. And uh, yeah, so like I said, hit the like, the like of the button. Yeah, hit the like button. See, I can't. It's late in the day. We're just gonna hang on. Reset. Okay, so ending the video here. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you guys like content like this, hit that like button. Um, if you guys want to see more content like this, hit in the, you know put it in the comments. What do you want to see next? We are getting the wiring done for the nitrous kit. Um, we are getting that. Very, we're very close on that. I'm still saying a couple of weeks out. So, anyways, like I said, we're ending the video. You guys have a good day. We will talk later.